A Year of American Literature. In this, the fourth and final quarter of American literature, we will contrast modernism from about the time of World War I into the 50s, which we studied in third quarter, with multiculturalism or postmodernism about the time of the 1960s through today. Keep in mind that postmodernism is still under construction. People don't agree on what it even is and they certainly don't agree on whether it's great or whether it's trash still we can assemble some of the main ideas and the most important one is got to be the rejection of grand narratives that means we're done with that big idea that's going to save us all the moderns like to come up with some big idea that's going to save us all. But the postmoderns are very skeptical of this sort of thing. We've seen it turn into communism and Nazism. They promise to deliver the workers paradise or the pure racial paradise. But the postmodernist thinks if you think you've discovered the secret, you're probably going to invent the secret police to enforce it. And this goes beyond utopian political schemes. Look how in the early part of the 20th century, we built these big hydroelectric dams and in the mid part of the century, huge nuclear power plants. We're gonna solve all our problems with one big project, huge freeway projects, huge housing projects. A postmodernist is much more likely to be attracted to wind or solar, individualized, not centralized, drone delivery, tiny houses. Well, what does this mean for literature? The moderns were looking for that great American novel, the big one. The postmodernists say every identifiable group ought to have its own department at the university. You should be aware, however, that not everybody falls into this. Some people are actually skeptical of a postmodernist skepticism. The grand narrative of Marxism or communism was essentially dividing people into two groups, the capitalists who have the money and the working class who are oppressed by the capitalists. After seeing millions of people incarcerated, abused, and murdered under this system, it became very difficult to actually support Marxism. But many critics of postmodernism call it cultural Marxism. They say you've merely replaced the capitalists with white heterosexual English-speaking Christian males and replaced the working class with every group that can claim any kind of oppression. But they claim you're still running the same old game. This focus on oppression has led many people to mock postmodernism as oppression studies. They don't see multiculturalists as wanting to end the oppression, but merely to turn the tables. Well, what does this mean for literature? It means that you should look for the subject of the book to be racism. It means you should look for the subject of the book to be misogyny and sexism. It means you should look for books which are from the perspective of excluded, misunderstood groups. Blurred borders. For many millennia, people have categorized things into distinct groups. Postmodernists want to break this down in many different ways, blur the borders between different things that they're looking at. For example, postmodernists want to blur the borders between high culture and pop culture. Take a look at some modernist architecture. These people are trying to be serious about their art of designing buildings. They are trying to make a serious statement. Now, let's take a look at 
some postmodernist buildings. There's a playfulness, a not seriousness about it. A postmodernist will take a piece of high culture, like the Mona Lisa, and recruit it into pop culture. Just look at some of these great paintings and what postmodernists have done with them. They're having fun with it. The postmodernists are also blurring the borders between comedy and drama. Modernist works tend to have a more stern, serious, grave tone. The very titles of famous modern novels, As I Lay Dying or The Grapes of Wrath, may appear melodramatic to the postmodern reader. In contrast, postmodern works may be more casual, conversational, playful. They may be a slipperiness to the postmodern works, whereas the reader isn't quite able to pin down whether it's serious or not. It's very clear that 2001, A Space Odyssey, the film from the 60s, is intended to be taken very seriously. But what about the fifth element? Sometimes it seems serious and sometimes it seems ridiculous. I'm sure you can think of many other examples yourself. Let's take a look at some important books of postmodernism and why they are considered postmodern. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, an Alabama girl and her brother grow up to understand racism. Why this is multicultural or postmodern? It's about racism. The minority characters are victims. The whites are either villainous racists, the indifferent masses that give racists the space to operate, or heroic allies. In The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wao, an overweight Dominican boy in New Jersey, obsessed with science fiction, fantasy, and falling in love, is plagued with a curse that has haunted his family for generations. Why it's multicultural and postmodern? Well, the main character is Dominican. It's narrated by multiple characters. It includes many Spanglish and buzzwords. It contains many fantasy and science fiction book and film references. Beloved, in Beloved by Toni Morrison, an escaped slave struggles with her choice to murder her child to keep her out of slavery. Why it's multicultural or postmodern? The main characters are African-American. The novel takes place in 1873 after slavery and in fragmented flashbacks of various characters. It remains unclear whether Beloved, the title character, is a ghost or is physical. It explores the all-encompassing destruction wrought by slavery, which affects the characters in freedom just as much as captivity. In The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay by Michael Chabon, two Jewish cousins, one Czech and one from Brooklyn, become major figures in the early comic book industry. Why it's multicultural or postmodern? Well, the main characters are Jewish. They work in the comic book industry, traditionally pop culture, but the book wins the Pulitzer Prize. In The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon, an autistic youth must clear his name after being blamed for the killing of the neighbor's dog. Why it's multicultural or postmodern? The main character is autistic. The reader sees the world only through his eyes. In Joseph Heller's Catch-22, the military bureaucracy delivers orders from above that make no sense, and a main character is Zaryan who just wants to stay alive. Why it's postmodern? White officers and soldiers oppress the Indian soldier Hal Fort as a different species. The soldiers treat the women including prostitutes and nurses, as playthings to manipulate. Catch-22 is filled with paradoxical language and anti-logical dialogues. Jennifer Egan's Visit from the Goon Squad is a satire of the modern pop music industry. Why it's multicultural or postmodern? It's focused on the pop music industry, traditionally low culture. It lacks a beginning, middle, and end, but just jumps around. It's satirical about fame and fortune. The characters tend to be nasty. Each chapter has a different main character and a different tone. 
in Alice Walker's Color Purple, an African-American woman is abused by men. Why it's multicultural postmodern, the main characters are African-American. The males are evil. A few thinkers that influenced the postmoderns. Michel Foucault examine the relationship between power and knowledge. Jacques Derrida, nothing exists outside of context. Baudrillard, people can't tell the difference between reality and a technological simulation. And Carl Jung, humans connect to each other and their ancestors through shared experiences, a collective consciousness that gives meaning to the world.